and welcome back to the Gunner Girls YouTube channel. If you are new, welcome. My name is Taylor and my goal with this channel is to educate you on women's health topics. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. In today's video, we're going to be talking about endometriosis. So before we get started into diving in, in what exactly is endometriosis and how do we diagnose and treat it, I figured I'd start with some statistics. Endometriosis is really common. One out of every 10 women in the United States will suffer from endometriosis. 40% of those women will also suffer from infertility. There's also a strong familial link with endometriosis. So we see this commonly running in families. For a woman who have a first degree relative that suffers from endometriosis, you're five to six times more likely to develop it. So as you can see, these are pretty staggering numbers. Endometriosis is pretty common and can affect a lot of women. So what is endometriosis? I like to explain this as an abnormal process or abnormal reaction to a normal process that happens within the body. We have this overgrowth of cells, of the endometrial cells. So normally the endometrial cells is what lines the uterus and when we get a period each month it sheds and that's what creates us to bleed. So in endometriosis, you have an overgrowth of those cells outside of the uterus. When these cells get in other organs, in the pelvis and the abdominal cavity, our body thinks that they're foreign invaders and they go into attack mode. So we're gonna attack these cells. So it creates an autoimmune reaction, this very inflammatory process in our body to help protect itself. Now there's a lot of theories as to how endometriosis can happen. There isn't one proven way that this can happen, but one of the most common theories and the one that I think makes the most sense is what we call retrograde menstruation. So when our uterus contracts, contracts each month, it creates that kind of cramping, that uncomfortable sensation. It pushes the blood down through the cervix into the vagina and we have a period or we have bleeding. Well, it doesn't just push the blood down. When it contracts, the blood's gonna go anywhere where there's an opening. So the other area where there's an opening is up at the top through the tubes. So it's very common for a woman to have this type of retrograde bleeding where it goes through the tubes, through the ovaries, into the abdominal cavity. However, in patients who have endometriosis, again, our body thinks that these cells are invaders and we're gonna go into attack mode and we're going to try to get rid of them. Over time, this leads to inflammation. Inflammation can lead to chronic pain, which can then lead to scarring and what we call adhesions. There's four different categories of endometriosis. We have stage one and stage two. This is the more beginning stages and more of inflammation. Then we have stages three and stage four. Those are more of the scarring phases or the more advanced phases. Now what's really unique about endometriosis is the stage or the severity of the disease does not always correlate with symptoms. Women can range from completely asymptomatic to struggling with infertility to debilitating pain every single day. So obviously our goal, and we're gonna talk about treatment a little later in the video, but our goal is to get people out of this cycle of this debilitating pain. We don't want women to be in this much pain. But like I said, severity does not always correlate with symptoms. So we can have women who have this debilitating, terrible pain and have a stage one or stage two. And we can have women who have a stage four, very advanced disease, lots of adhesions in the belly, lots of scar tissue, and have mild symptoms, struggle with infertility, and have mild pain. So there's a big range in symptoms. Now diagnosis can be pretty tricky. We, we mainly diagnose this based on symptoms. There's no easy blood test. There's no easy sonogram that can show us that we have endometriosis. Now in women who have more advanced disease, we can see some things on a sonogram. Some things that we can see that are common would be what we call endometrioma, which is endometrial tissue inside the ovary. And the other term for that, or the common term is called a chocolate cyst. That would indicate that we have more of an advanced disease with some scarring. But other than that, we really can't see endometriosis on a pelvic sonogram. The true way, definitive way to diagnose this is through an exploratory laparoscopy or exploratory surgery in the abdomen. 
We don't do these on every patient, but if you definitely have really debilitating pain, we've tried multiple different treatment options. That's always an option to do surgery. And then if we see these endometrial tissues, we can go ahead and remove them. Typically, if I'm seeing a younger girl in the office and she's coming in saying she's having this debilitating pain with her period, she's missing school every month. She's missing social events, sporting events, because her periods are so bad. There's a high chance that she may have endometriosis, especially if she has a family history where mom suffered from endometriosis or suffered from very heavy, painful periods when she was younger as well. So that kind of dives me into the treatment options. We really want to treat these people and halt their disease before it progresses and it leads to that inflammatory scar tissue phase. Unfortunately, with endometriosis, there's no way to reverse the disease or reverse any scar tissue or damage that's been done. But again, the goal is to halt the process before it progresses. The way that endometrial tissue grows or is fueled is by the hormone estrogen. So every month when a woman goes through her cycle and she ovulates, she releases an egg. That egg releases estrogen, which stimulates the endometrial tissue to grow and to build up. So with each ovulatory cycle, women are increasing their estrogen and they're stimulating the growth of more endometrial tissue, more endometrial tissue, more tissue. And this is just going to keep progressing their disease. So our main goal for treatment is by stopping or blocking ovulation and decreasing the estrogen. The way that we do this is through birth control. So any type of birth control that has hormones in it. So that would be pills, an IUD, the Nexplanon, which is in the arm, the Depo shot, the vaginal rings. Birth controls that have hormones in it are going to stop you from ovulating and help to stop the progression of this disease. Now, if we have very severe cases, we can also do surgery that are going to remove some of these tissues. And if we are struggling with infertility and we are trying to start a family, birth control isn't obviously the best option. So we may have to work with an infertility specialist, and if you have to, that's okay. There are so many really good infertility specialists that really can help women with endometriosis. We may have to have an HSG, which is a fancy term, to see if the tubes are opened. A lot of times, again, with endometriosis, that scar tissue can block those tubes, which can then lead to infertility. Another mainstay treatment with endometriosis, which I recommend to all my patients, is lifestyle modifications. So remember when I said in the beginning stages, it's really fueled by inflammation. So one of our goals is to decrease that systemic inflammation, and that can be through a healthy diet, exercise, and good supplementation. Now, if you have any questions on endometriosis, anything that I didn't cover, please put it in the comments and I would be happy to go over this in a future video. If you find this content useful, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in a future video.